Join the conversation by calling in at 476-1045 or tweet into the show at 1045 The Team. It's Big Board Sports with Roger Weiland on 1045 The Team. John Bramley is our WNYT uh, soccer analyst, has been for many, many years, former coach, former player, and uh, been with us for a long time. We enjoy his insight when it comes to the World Cup, and we bring John on for a few minutes here on the Monday show. Good morning, John Bramley. Good morning, sir. How are we doing? One thing we do know for sure is going to be an all-European final. Either That's way, right. which that, is amazing. That we know. And I did get your little uh, email over the weekend saying I told you about Belgium, and you were you were <laughs> right on Belgium right from day one. Yeah, uh, now I've got my views on the games that are coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday, but uh, as you know, I've got Freddie with me, and he probably thinks a different story. So that'll be interesting <laughs> to find out. <laughs> yes, uh, let's start with uh, let's start with England. England advances to the semis for the first time since 1990. They will face Croatia, which has won back to back games in a shootout. That game is Wednesday, two o'clock here in the United States. Well, it depends on uh, a couple of people. If um, if England can keep Modric in midfield quiet, and if Kane can start scoring goals and Dele Alli, England midfield, actually decides to put the effort in, then I think that England have the capacity to beat Croatia. Uh, so I would I would go for England, but it's going to be tight at this stage anyway. But I, my bet there would be England, France, Belgium. Who who knows? Uh, France are playing well. And they've got Shiru and Mbappe playing well up there, but. My my uh, team, my friends with Hazard playing well and Lukaku scoring goals. That one again is, it, for me, it's too close to call. And any one of these four could win the World Cup, but I would probably put Croatia in fourth place, and the other three can fight it out. Mbappe w- w- with France, John, as you know, has yes. really burst onto the scene here as a 19-year-old. He's known internationally, but here in the states, I think a lot of people are now taking notice. Uh, he will garner a lot of money in the near future uh but belgium might have the best keeper in the entire tournament not even just of the four teams remaining with messi and ronaldo and then even neymar now out john who do you believe is the best player left in this tournament oh for me without doubt it's hazard Mm. he excites me every time he gets the ball he seems to know one thing and that is to um to go forward and go direct, which is what I would like Dele Alli to do for England, but he some, somehow he seems to want to wait for things to happen, whereas Hazard makes things happen. And that, to me, is the, is the big difference. But um, as you say, they've got three good goalkeepers. I know them all well because they all play in the English Premier League. Right. And, uh, of course, if it, if, it, if it happened to end up Belgium, England, then pretty much 20 players would be from the English Premier League. So <laughs> we'll see. So, so we just talked about with Chris that, that your nephew Freddie comes yep. here uh, when in England right now. Obviously, things are things are crazy with what's going on. So, well, why don't you ask him? He's sat right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's let's put Freddie on. Uh, hey, Freddie, it's Roger and Chris. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? We're good. Welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, I think you get in on the, on the 4th of July, and you're here for a couple of weeks, and we're going to connect with uh, Freddie, both radio uh, and TV. Well, what is your take on uh, on England? Or are you surprised they're in the Final Four? Yes, I'm very surprised. Back home, it was never expected that uh, this side would be making anywhere near to this stage of the competition. So it's a big shock to all of England, but they're playing very well, and they could go all the way. Yeah. What will be the so if you're if you're going to watch this game and I know a lot of people will be and including yourself uh, on Wednesday what what are we looking for here in this matchup? Uh, firstly, I think the whole game goes down to they have to mark out Luka Modric and Ivan Rakitic of Croatia as both are very good playmakers and will be able to find gaps in that England team as Jordan Henderson cannot do it on his own. Many gaps could be exploited. Freddie, how about the keeper on your side? Uh, John has told us uh, a really interesting backstory uh, about his rise here to stardom and playing uh, for the international squad. Yeah, Jordan Pickford uh, was relegated with Sunderland but recently joined Everton and since has been a complete superstar and has taken headlines at the World Cup. He suffered a slight injury after the game in the penalty shootout of Columbia. However, he seems to be okay after celebrating and punching his knee rather than the air. But uh, he says he's all good to go. So, yeah, Croatia could have a problem trying to get past him. 
do you agree with John about maybe maybe this a surprise team that got in there at Belgium, and how do you match them up with France? I think the game of Belgium and France goes down to if Mbappe is creating and getting on the ball. I think if they, if the company can uh, help shield him out of play and not let him on the ball as much, it will change the game. However, for Belgium, like uh, John said, Hazard and Lukaku, Hazard will make things happen. And one that uh, goes sometimes under the radar, but is a big name, is Kevin De Bruyne. Recently took a, a big goal against Brazil. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he turns up against France and does the same. So, yeah, one to watch out for. Hey, Freddie, uh, internationally, what is kind of the the word on a kid like Christian Pulisic, who obviously everybody here in the States we're hoping is maybe kind of the, the next big thing for America. Uh, is he held at such a, a the same high regard uh, as we seem to have for him here in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, back in England, he's a big name, and he's known as a wonder kid. He's taking the headlines of quite uh, quite a lot of teams. Many scouts are looking at him right now, so yeah. He's a, he's a big name with a lot of talent, you know, uh, so yeah, the pressure's on him. If he can keep up that form, he might just find himself being a big name in the future. Freddie, if you were if you were back home to watch this, what would where would you be? Who would you be hanging with? What kind of what kind of atmosphere would we be, uh, be talking about? Uh, if I was back home watching this, uh, I'd probably be with uh, most of my friends, and it would be a very tense environment because we all want England to go all the way, but that team are full of mistakes at the back. So hopefully they don't get exploited. Well, I know you're going to be revved up on uh, on Wednesday. Looking forward to it. Freddie, I will see you soon uh, a couple of different times this week, and uh, we'll look look forward to it. Yeah, looking forward to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That's Freddie and uh, John Bramley. John. That's awesome. And uh, do they know their stuff or what, huh? Yeah.